Because if we were all strong and stoic, as they say, and and, and masculine, and we came together and we were just, you know, in, in, in lockstep with each other and and you couldn't break our bond, then what they wouldn't be able to get. They wouldn't be able to take your property. Yeah, you know, we I all understand that they definitely. Grandma sells her. They don't want a revolution. Dies, we sell her house. They they take all our property. We they don't have no wealth. All, they, we, we, we buy stupid shit. We do all this dumb stuff. Think about why they even legalize weed. You know, let's drug up everybody. Let's get everybody yeah. high and shiftless and kicking back and play play some, not no shout out to my man, be mad, but play some Madden all day, some 2K. Can't wait for the next video game. <laughs> Sitting around smoking. And you know what? You Now you just lazy. And, oh, I can't go drive a forklift or get my Dude, that's it. <laughs> trucker's license because, shit, I'm high all the time. And I, you know, that's the idea. I'm high all the time. I smoke that good shit. Stay and, and high I, all the I, time. I, would also, I, I agree with that. I agree. I, I agree with that. And I feel like that's tied into uh, why they're jumping on the Second Amendment rights as well. All right. <clears throat> go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Swain. Okay. So. I don't want to approach this. Uh, here's the thing. And, and I know they spoke a lot towards masculinity, right? One of the biggest problems is that masculinity has been deemed toxic. So you have a lot of weak men because they've been constantly told that being a man is a problem. Now, you couple being a man being considered a problem with also telling men that they are disposable, you have yourself a conundrum on your hands in this world. Men are being told that they're not that they're worthless and that they're disposable, that their work don't count in the world. And then not only that, but you're telling these men that, hey, when you're a man, that shit's toxic. When you stand on your own too, when you stand up to something, you're toxic. When you have boundaries, you're toxic. When you exercise boundaries, you're toxic. But you tell me that you love masculinity, though. You're telling me you love masculinity, but every time I every time my masculinity show up, you want to run to somebody and tell them, hey, you need to beat the masculinity out that motherfucker. He's a little too masculine. So how do you convince? Like, it, it's hard to sit here and, and look at these men and be able to say, hey, man, you're not being man enough when you have everybody in the world telling them that being a man is wrong. We we can't even, how many times have we seen a man, uh, Jonah Hill, prime example, all he did was exercise his boundaries and everybody called it toxic. He said, look, I'm not going for that. Whatever works for you, honey, you can do that. But I'm not going for it. And what was it? Oh, no, he toxic. That's wrong. That's not a man. A real man would tap into his femininity. A real man would understand. Shit, we just watched one of the, like, some some of the dudes that we deem the most masculine men on the planet. We watched Steph, we watched Steph Curry, wife, disrespect him live on TV, and he couldn't say shit about it. Because if let Steph Curry have said one thing about his wife doing what she did publicly, and he would have got canceled immediately. And we are not, there's a lot of men that look up to Steph. You know what's crazy? We watched LeBron James credit, credit his mama for his success. But when I read up on LeBron James when he was growing up, if he would have stayed, if his mama didn't give him up to his coach, he would have been a failure. But do you hear him giving credit to his coach who was married? How did what do you think he learned how to be a father? What do you think he learned? How to take care of children. Where do you think he learned how to be a husband from? I ain't no way in here he learned that from his mama. He learned that from his coach, but you never hear about that though. You don't hear about that's, the coach. That's you give all credit to his mama. Well, look, hey, hey, Sweeney, shout out to Dwayne Wade. His Hall of Fame speech, he credited his father. I talked about that on Monday, man. Shout out and to what's Dwayne. What's crazy is he credited that was one huge. dude that credited his father. Is the right. one dude out here looking like the biggest goddamn and he, fool? And look at him. He really does. He really does. Coming for him. Oh my is that God. is that a, is that a coinky dinky? Is that a, just? I a, couldn't is believe it. Just it. Coincidence? How about that? Of all people. Mm -hmm. 
But it's, it's like we. How do you sit here and convince men that masculinity is good and being masculine is good, but when when we're talking out of both sides of our and not not the men on here, we know what we talking about. See, if it came from us and we were leading the conversation, it'd come off better. But when you have an entire society speaking against your masculinity, not only no not only in all the media that you see, you see it in shit. The video games are even starting to change. <laughs> I know we talk about video games, but even the video games are starting to tell you, hey, look, being a man is wrong. The, the movies are telling you being a man is wrong. Going out in the world is telling you being a man is wrong. How do you expect these men to want to be men if being told, they're being told constantly that being a man is wrong? Which is why all of y'all should have a King Talk channel. Because like you use Jonah Hill as an example. See what, what, the, what the world and what you know his girlfriend or his ex-girlfriend attempted to do and what she rallied against when she sent out her battle cry for all the women that come against him is for him to ultimately go to therapy and go sit at somebody's sofa and listen to some doctor tell him that, you know, he needs to be more understanding and maybe he's gaslighting her and he should consider her career as a surfer and that she was a professional surfer before he met her. And it's OK for her to be naked on Instagram. That's what she's always done. And she, it's OK for her to, to privately teach men out in the water how to be a surfer and all these things that he, the, a therapist would tell him and to ignore us. And I don't necessarily agree with Andrew when he says that therapy, because I believe in therapy. I think people should go to therapy, but I also believe these should, people should do therapy and have a brotherhood. See a lot of the problem is, and the reason why I'm here every week is because I consider y'all brothers. We only talk once a week. I really don't talk to you guys outside of this, but this three hours that I get to hang out with y'all, Last me about seven days and I got to come back and get another dose of my bros. And that's just for me. And then I take that. And if I had to go to therapy, I juxtapose the information I hear from you to them. Then I got my fraternity brothers. I got other people in my life, other men. But the problem is a lot of guys don't have guys. All they got is a therapist. And then with that, it's a complete lopsided issue. And that's what they don't. They don't want us to come together, black men particularly. They don't want you guys to come together and talk about nothing. You don't have a voice. In fact, go back to where y'all was just going to work and shutting up. Going and to work letting, shutting up. Just go back to that. Just That's when life was wonderful for women. That's where the gynocracy part comes in. That's where we talk about in the black community. It's more of a matriarchal setup, but it's really just... A, you know, it's a gynocentric setup. So the point is, if men would not necessarily discount therapy, because I believe in therapy, I don't really like the way Andrew put it out there. And I don't believe that he really believes it. I think he says it like I think he means it like I kind of laid it out. But you got to have the counterbalance of men that come together and have conversations. And a lot of guys all right now, they're they just, all, all they got is Facebook. All they got is YouTube. Maybe they have Clubhouse. Outside of that, when they log off their phones or they they shut down their laptop, they close the top of their laptop and they go out into the world, it's just him. It's nothing else. It's just him. It's not a lot of guys don't got somebody to go to the gym with. Don't got somebody to go ball with on Saturday mornings. Don't have somebody to. And, and, and you know what? You know what's happening? The only outlet that they do have is putting on an Oculus VR headset or, or firing up their Xbox or PlayStation. Because they can find some guys there, but even that is virtual. And humans, we're not, you know, we haven't, we haven't evolved over the last however many thousand years to be fucking sitting in a TV playing Xbox. We are colonial people and we need each other physically, in person, energy next to each other. That's why when we ball, when we hitting each other, that all that kind of stuff matters. When we're in the gym and somebody spotting you, all that stuff matters. But a lot of people don't have that and they don't want you to have that. Because if they re eliminate that from your lives and they incentivize staying home and playing games all day long, going to work, being in your cubicle and not going to lunch, not going to happy hour after work, ignoring, you know, don't go to happy hour. Just go straight to the parking lot, to the employee parking lot, get in your car, go home and watch Netflix and play games and then wash, rinse, repeat and do it the next day. Then weak men are easy to control. 